Okay, today we're going to look at, tro well, trying to do a pressure test on a boat. Um, the idea is to try and work out where your boat's leaking from, if your pride and joy starts leaking. Um, before we go, before you launch into a pressure test, best thing to do is make sure that all the hatches are sealed up properly. Um, these seashore hatches, are, or even RWA ones, are really, really good and don't tend to don't tend to be a problem with the, the O-rings because they tend to be out of the sun. Um, however, it's still worth cleaning them if you've got these on your boat. The other ones you can get these whole talon ones, uh, which look like this. Um, have uh, have an o-ring that tends to be on the outside and if they get any sand on them or any grit they'll just leak like a sieve so the best thing to do is clean all the hatches off first and then try going sailing in your boat again and seeing if it leaks at all Okay, so if you're pretty sure that your boat's leaking and it's not the hatch that's leaking and you've sorted that all out, then you'll probably want to do a fresh test. Um, in order to do this, uh, essentially all you've got to do is fill the hull with air and go around it with soapy water. Um, so these are the bits and pieces that I reckon you need in order to do this. So you probably need some kind of inflating pump. Um, Alcohol is always quite useful and some paper. Um, Probably the more important thing is a bucket of water and some fairy washing up liquid to make bubbles with. Um, marker pen's quite useful as well to mark where the actual leak is. And the other things that are quite handy are a brush and a tongue depressor and a bit of electrical tape. Um, I'll explain the tongue depressor in a second. Okay, so in order to do a pressure test, the first thing you've got to do is seal up the breather hole. Every boat has a breather hole in it somewhere, at least one. Some have more than one. In the case of this boat, this RS200, and most of the RS boats, they have their breather holes uh, above the top cushion where the rudder fits on, um, which is a bit of a pain because it's quite hard to get to. Hence the reason a tongue depressor is quite handy. So in order to, do, to take it up, Get some tape, get it on the end of your tongue depressor, and with a bit of luck, you'll be able to push it down and seal it nicely onto the hull. The idea being then that no air is going to escape from there. Okay, so assuming you've got the breather hole taped up, the next thing to do is blow up the hull with some air. Um, in order to do this, basically get your pump, stick it on the bungalow and inflate. Um, bit of a warning, if it's quite a good boat that you've got and it's not leaking by very much, make sure you don't put in more than five pumps of air on one of these big, big pumps, otherwise it is pretty possible to actually blow your hole up um, due to the pressure that's created. Um, so, this is where it's quite handy to have someone else to help you. So, if my assistant Alex just starts pumping away so that's in about five pumps or so um, and all I'm going to do is uh, put some washing up liquid into the water and then grab a brush. And the idea is you want to just try and keep the hull inflated with some air so you can go around with the soapy water and work out where it's leaking from. So after you put your five pumps in maybe do one pump every 30 seconds, something along those lines. And then what you want to do is really thoroughly go around with the soapy water and just see if you can find anywhere where it's exploding. And the best way of doing this is just to be really thorough and really methodical and just literally brush the entire hull with soapy water. And wherever it's exploding, is where it's leaking from. Good thing to check are the bonding strips as um, particularly around where they sit on the trolley they'll normally crack and delaminate. However in the case of this musto that we've got upside down I think it sounds like it's the must uh, sorry the centaur case that's cracked. Uh, 
Yeah, which is leaking massively. In the case of this Mustang, we're pretty sure that it's the centerboard case, as I'm sure you can probably hear from the footage. Um, important thing to note is that it's not just necessarily one place. The other place where it could be leaking, the other, it could be leaking from a couple of other places as well. It's just that this is the biggest hole. So sometimes, if it's somewhere you can get to, which this isn't, sometimes it's worth taping it over and then carrying on going around which will just seal it enough so that you can go and see if you can find any other places. Okay, so just to emphasize the point, the other place it could be leaking from is from this gunnel joint just along here. Um, as you can see, it's cracked, and I think with a bit of air coming through it, you should be able to see it just starting to explode with bubbles. Basically, the tip is, look for where the bubbles are exploding. Uh... Okay, so, um, as we said before, uh, when you're doing this leak testing, it's a constant thing. Once you've found one place where, it's, where your hole's leaking from, after you've fixed it, you need to re-leak test it and double check that it's working again. Um, it could still be leaking quite a lot of air. From, from somewhere else, there could be another hole. So you could have to repeat this process three or four times in order to get a boat that's really, really watertight, and that's something quite important to emphasize. Um, and I think that's about it, really, to be honest. Um, I'd like to thank the assistance of Alex, whose very good footwork allowed the uh, pumping up of the hull, and as per usual, the excellent filming skills of Sarah Bagley. Uh, Bia has also been here giving us some moral support. Thank you.